Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. I want to welcome you guys out today to episode 134 of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name is Chris Hollifield. Thank you so much for checking out the show, downloading it, streaming it, however you're listening to it. Thank you so much for checking it out. IamSaltLake.com is the website. You can head on over there, get in touch with me, all the contact information right there. Links for iTunes, Stitcher Radio. We're also on the Mediocre Radio Network. Again, all of that can be found on the website at IamSaltLake.com. This episode, I sat down with Austin, Grant, Johnny Byrne, Tim Drake. We talk about a brand new web series they're working on called The Job Interview. We talk about the uh, how the idea came about, and we actually got a little bit into the production, as well as talking about a fundraiser that they're working on to help fund the project. At the time of the interview, they were actually going to be doing the uh, fundraiser through Kickstarter, but they've changed that to Indiegogo. You can find all the links to support them in their endeavor at the uh, show notes at IamSaltLake.com slash 134. They have some great kickbacks for their backers. You're going to want to make sure to check all of those out. Again, the show notes, IamSaltLake.com slash 134. Really great time. Tim Drake's been on the podcast a few other times. I'm going to put all put all the links of the uh, other episodes that Tim's been on the podcast right there in the show notes too. So make sure to uh, check out those episodes as well. Really quickly, I of course want to mention our sponsor, the Urban Lounge. They're located right in downtown Salt Lake City. Their website, theurbanloungeslc.com, where you can check out all of the shows that are going to be coming up there. You can get little uh, snippets of the music. That way you can hear music from the bands that are going to be playing there. You can buy tickets for the shows all right there at the urban lounge, slc.com. I'm going to quit talking now. So why don't you guys join me now as they talk to uh, Austin, Johnny and Tim, as they came over to my apartment here in downtown Salt Lake city to talk about their new web series, the job interview. The job interview, that's what we're here to talk about, Yes. as well as uh, we have uh, Austin and Johnny and Tim back on the podcast uh, for the third I like time. I always nod. Yes, <laughs> yes. This is like a, an audible medium. That's, yeah, yeah, that's very helpful. You can hear the, yeah. Well, I need to get a, I, you know, I, I, I should start recording like video recording of the podcast or something Ooh, like that. Audio and, meets video. But uh, anyways, well, I'm, I'm going to kind of have you guys, uh, so listeners, you know, listeners probably know everything about Tim Drake break already but uh johnny and austin and more tim they, and tim they is, want to know yeah and tim as well why don't you guys just kind of give an introduction about yourself and uh, your f- history a little bit as well as uh your role with uh, the job interview i don't know who wants to go first i guess i'll go first i hate introducing myself i hate talking about myself i know that's why i made you go first <laughs> i'm like uh, i was like I'm you can austin, go you can set uh, the bar I'm an actor. No. Um, I've lived in Utah my whole life, and I went to Jordan High School, and uh, I was a sports person my whole life. I was a jock. And my junior year of high school, that's when I kind of got into acting. I have a brother-in-law who does it, and so I auditioned for the school play and got a role, and kind of ever since then, I've transitioned into acting, and all my friends called me Troy from... (laughs) High School Musical. Cause I was, and they're like, hey, Troy! And I was like, Gosh. like, legit one time I walked into a basketball game and like the entire student section was chanting Troy because I came in late and they're yelling at me and it was embarrassing. But, That's funny. Yeah, anyways, uh, and then uh, I go to Salt Lake Community College. Woohoo. Bruin Pride. <laughs> Great school. Bruin Pride, yeah. yeah. And what are you studying at uh, Salt Lake Community College? I have no nothing. Idea. Just general, just generals right now. <laughs> That's what the plan was. Just fun. It was generals, and then I got shit on <laughs> last semester. And uh, and how was that? What What do you mean you got shit on? Uh, I got shit on, meaning I took like math ten ten, English ten ten, history something, an acting class, and the play, and working, and that's. And like all of that together in a matter of like two months, like 
Mix oh, just, just, oh, you got overwhelmed. Yeah, you that's just, what I, you, that's you, what you, I meant. You just kind of freaked. I thought maybe I thought like everyone that. knew what shit on meant. Well, no, I, I mean, <laughs> in, 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 I, I thought maybe <laughs> I, you I, meant I was like expecting from, something flung at you. Like, well, no, no, yeah, like, yeah, like, like like a teacher <laughs> screwed you over or or something. You know, no, you, you were I t- screwed myself. <laughs> just just took on way too much. Bit off uh, you. Yeah, bit off. There you go. He's got a small mouth. See, and I just take I I'll do like two classes a semester or something. That's what I'm doing now. Yeah, it's very. I'm like, yeah, this is great. I got to work full time. You know, I do. Yeah. podcast i don't have time to, to yeah, pay no, the no, bills no. dude you know yeah uh, gotta make that bread exactly yeah i'm in like a voiceover class in film production right now <laughs> and it's awesome yeah so, so you're taking some some film classes yeah, some film then. classes but i don't i guess have a film major you know it's not technically is that your end major. goal though at all oh, to, yeah, no, to get I'm, into film yeah absolutely so that's why i'm taking it is i just don't know if i'm going to stay long enough to finish the film degree that's why i but I'm taking like the film class to learn, you know, obviously. Do you have like a goal like outside of uh, Salt Lake Community? To, like, do you want to go on to the U or is there another school you want to go on to? Or? Not really. Not right now, at least. You're just enjoying the uh, nice community college <laughs> scene. Yep. The community college he'll, scene. He'll eventually join me out in good old sunny L.A. Too. Yeah, that's the plan, at least. You still want to get back to L.A., don't you, Tim? Could be a matter of a few months or we'll see how a few things, uh, few things fall. Gosh, I'm, you, you'll be back. They all come back. They always come back. They always come he'll back. He'll be back. back to like the he'll be back. You'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> Do you love Utah? <laughs> Mr. Drake? Well, it's just such a cheap place to live. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, yeah. you can't beat the cost of living here. And I mean, it's uh, yeah. pretty easy to find work, in my opinion. I, I don't like know. to live uncomfortably. You like to live. In, you, you like to challenge yourself. Yeah. I like to challenge myself. How am I going to eat this week? So, what is your, your, your role? Uh, Austin, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, in in the job interview. Yeah, what it's Adam. His Adam. Name is Adam, and he's the I guess the protagonist of the whole thing. He's guy who's down on his luck. Just I mean, you don't really see any of this, but you know, just got laid off, and now the story starts. He's just trying to find a job and get back into the swing of things, and uh, is so desperate he was willing to take advice from his two idiot friends. And how did you guys meet? So Austin and I got to know each other in. A class a couple semesters back that was, uh, it was supposed to be speech and diction for actors. <laughs> yeah, not. And it was not speech and diction for actors. But by the time we realized this, it was too far along the semester to drop it. So we were just kind of stuck with it. Yeah. But it was more of speech for non-native, non-native speakers. Oh gosh. Yeah, it was us. Yeah. Like five Mexicans, three Asians, and something else, like a, Woman from the Middle East. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, I'll try, I'll try, and I'm trying to speak English. Very commendable for them for, you know, furthering themselves. Yeah, no, a, it's a nice I'll resource. Them, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah and, and they did a great job. And I mean, it was, <laughs> it was humbling to look at as how much we take it for granted and realizing yeah. that like English is a weird, that they're, like, language. People's yeah. mouths from speaking other dialects don't even move in the same way. Yeah. I'll never forget one lady we had in the class that she was trying to learn just how to say cat and, and having your tongue hit the, at the like the, the, top yeah. part of your mouth. And, as she's saying it, our teacher told him, yeah, hold, hold it up and look in the mirror so you can see how it does that. And I'll never forget this old, old little Hispanic lady pulling numbers going, cat, <laughs> cat, and like stretching your mouth cat. out really wide. Well, she, she couldn't, her, yeah, she her couldn't, tea would she, like, she was in your class. Yeah, she was in our her class, but like her, outside, her like, mouth wouldn't form the same way that we yeah. say something as simple as cat. She it just didn't form that way. So it was interesting, I mean, to learn how, you know, we, we always hear, you know, politicians and stuff. Yeah, everyone needs to be speaking English. And it's like, it's not that easy, really. Like it's when confusing. you, when you're in the, when you're in those classes and you see people trying to. Oh, it's amazing to watch people struggle. Yeah. You know, I'm taking a, an English class right now and I have a few uh, foreign speaking people in my class and just to, you know, it's like, gosh, that's gotta be a tough, tough to take yeah. some of those classes that we think are so easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it was still, I mean, there, there were still a lot of great things we took away from it, even though it was an absolutely yeah. pointless class, but we got to know each other there uh-huh. and I knew Austin was an actor and it was my first semester doing film. And so when I needed an actor really kind of last minute on a film, I hit up (laughs) Austin and was just like, hey, can you come do this? And then the film got changed even last minute of what we were filming. It was just, it was an absolute clusterfuck of (laughs) of everything that entire (laughs) week. So we ended up not being able to cast two people in the film. And so last minute I had to rewrite a whole new script. And I ended up playing the lead role and I was atrocious, absolutely atrocious. And then Austin was playing the center director at this place. <laughs> so, and it was for, there's a chapter in the My House on the Moon book called The Narcissist. And I basically made a short film out of it. And it did not work in short film form. 
it needs to stay an essay. <laughs> it was it yeah. was terrible. Terrible this, beyond all this means. Thing, what, like, what makes you decide, thing. okay, so you, you write it and you think, okay, this might make a good short film. At what point do you decide, no, this isn't working? Like, what made you... When your entire crew hates the director. <laughs> yeah. The, it, <laughs> my entire crew honestly hated me. And it was... <laughs> why so why did they hate you? What Because... It's so ironic because like the center is supposed to be for like depressed, you know, like yeah. pessimistic people, and like literally everyone. Tim's like, "Hey, will you move that light?" And people are just just text. Just yeah, like, it, it, like, it was screw. it was more or less that I wanted to make something. I wanted to take this serious. I wanted to get something done. But and they, the but they saw them, you as an asshole. Yeah, they saw me as an asshole, and I mean, I can be an asshole. I mean, there's no doubts there. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I'm learning this very quickly. Yes, <laughs> but. But don't it, you it think just, most directors are in a in a way like because it's like they have to yeah, I mean, they have can, to stay on top of their yeah. game. But there's a skeleton they from like Spielberg to, to David O. Russell. I mean, it's yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Spiel, Spielberg, I'm sure, there's, is an asshole to a degree, but he's also a great director to work with. Whereas David O. Russell just goes insane on like everything that he's in. I mean, there's a YouTube video you can look up. I can't remember what the film was of of David O. Russell and Lily Tomlin, where he's just like destroying the set, freaking out. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, the director, like an actor, you know, we, we can do a project, we move on, you know, film maybe f- yeah. 10 things in a year. A director, it's like one project for, you know, possibly two years or however Yeah, because long aside been. from just the filming, we're, we're in the pre-production, we're, you know, working on the script and working on the shot list, making sure that everything is ready to go. And then on set, they've got so much they got to worry yeah. about, you know, oh, this light needs to be moved here. That I don't like that tablecloth. You know, i got to work with the actors. i got to, you know, all this crap. That... It's like they have to direct the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's really weird, yeah. They, they, yeah. I mean, before we get too far, Johnny, <laughs> yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> yeah, it's about time you... <laughs> right? Yeah, well, people um, are wondering, what's this voice talking? He hasn't introduced <laughs> Who's himself. this guy? Um, yeah. Austin throws his voice. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm Austin's conscience. Um, no, uh, my name's Johnny Byrne. Um, kind of similar story to Austin. I've lived in Utah all my life. So you grew up here? Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, just yeah. The Salt Lake area. And honestly, as long as I can remember, I always wanted to be a movie star. I just like well, who doesn't, right? right? We exactly. All, we all want to exactly. be famous, right? And so, um, and I was always very much of an extrovert. Always loved making people laugh and stuff. And so I took some like acting classes throughout junior high and really liked it. But then decided not to do the musical in high school and just really regretted it. What and, musical was it? Uh, it was Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Were you going to be the Were you going to be the Beauty or the Beast? I ideally, I mean, who wouldn't want to be the Beauty? You, you but the Beauty. I mean, right? But I mean, I'd have taken Baker three. Yeah. You know, I'd have taken Pitchfork Man. <laughs> but you, know? you didn't do it. You didn't do that. You didn't do it. Right? I, and, and why? I, why didn't you do it? You know, I don't know. I kind of told myself I needed to focus on school and whatever. But then I didn't even really focus on school. But wasn't that school? <laughs> wasn't that part? It, of it was with the school. But I was like, you know, my grades kind of slipped last year. Maybe I should just kind of. Well, it's probably what because you didn't do a musicals. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Your grades yeah. slipped. You exactly. Made a hell of a guest on. Thank you. Yeah. Can you see Johnny as guest on? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. I'll take that. Shut up. But then, and I went and watched it, and I seriously, like, it just hit me. Like, I got really emotional. I was like, I, I, I couldn't explain to myself why I didn't do it. I had no good reason. And so I was like, forget that. So I took um, an acting class from the director of it, who was also the theater teacher. And she even asked me, she's like, Johnny, why didn't you do the musical this year? I was because really, I'm an idiot, right? I, yeah, I, I really don't know. And so then my junior year, we ended up doing Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. And I was Caleb, the third oldest brother, um, and had a total blast. Fell in love with it and just really found my niche and my passion. And then uh, senior year, we did Les Miserables. And I, we had a lot of, lot of talented people in it. And so I wasn't any of the lead roles, but I ended up being like ensemble extraordinaire <laughs> um because she would like who's that guy doing those fan kicks no but like really though like parents at the at the performances like oh they'd find their friends and be like listen i'm glad you're here to see my son but while you're here this kid johnny <laughs> see how many times you can find him throughout the night like because he's just always in the show doing like because we would just sit there at rehearsal and i had like a couple minor parts with like small like one or two lines and then we'd be at rehearsal blocking a new scene and it'd be like, okay, so we've got Valjean coming in and uh, he's coming to a farm trying to work. We need a farmer and a worker. And, you know, she'd be reading the script and see that they each had a line be like farmer and worker. And I'd shoot my hand up and she'd be like, Hey, Johnny, you're the worker. 
awesome. And then next scene would come around. She's like, okay, I need two constables to come up and, you know, catch him and, and bring him back. And then I'd raise my hand and <laughs> it just became like, a, like by the end, people were just saying like when they'd ask what role I was, they'd just say I was Les Mis because like, I was in it so you much. And, and it was honestly, it was so much fun. I mean, I was really bummed I didn't get a lead. But it was so much fun, and it actually helped me a lot because my director was very, I mean, it was a very high-quality show. And so she told me, she's like, I need you to sound different and look different on every role. Like, if I see the same person twice, I'm giving one of those to somebody else. And if you miss a single costume change, I'm giving it to somebody else. And so it was very, like, it was high pressure and stuff. (laughs) But it it helped me grow a lot, you know, because I had to really roll that all into one thing. It was really trying. And then after high school, I was like, you know, I'd really love to do this. I went to up to Utah state for a year with a couple of my friends. And I was like, I'd really love to do this, but you know, I don't want my mom to be like, Oh yeah, he's up at Utah state getting his theater degree. You like explaining to her <laughs> friends and yeah. having them be like, Oh, well, Definitely and is there something, that. is there something wrong with that though? I mean, you know, I depend, depend on yeah. who they're, uh-huh. who you're talking to. Yeah. Cause a lot of people, any sort of artsy degree, they're like, Oh, well have fun having him come back and move in with you when he's 30. <laughs> Live in you your know? basement. Right. Man. Exactly. Well, nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you oh, know, that's cool. So what do you really go? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. that's a cool hobby. What are you going to do for, for money? You know, kind of a thing. And so I didn't want to deal with that and whatever and so i was like i'll just do my generals i'll find you know a real job and then uh but i took an acting class anyway and before i knew it i was just ditching all my other classes and just going to the acting class you know that's all because that's where your passion was that's where your heart was right and so it was like you know what and it just you know it kind of took off from there i was like let me go back live back at home because i don't know what i'm gonna get my degree in but I don't think it's here yeah. at Utah State. Rather than waste all that right. time and money. Right, time and money. I, why don't I live at home, save money that way, go to Slick, save money that way, and just take some generals and, you know, find out what happens. And then... So you're, so you're going to Salt Lake Community right now, then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm assuming that's how you met uh, Austin and Tim. Unfortunately, yes. yes yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, that is how it happened. I took an acting one class with our director um, the semester after he did. And so, like, just after, and then um, uh, we ended up taking an auditions class together last yeah. semester. Last fall. Yeah, which was, uh, it, that was a fun and trying class. We had to bring a different <laughs> yeah. style monologue every single week. And so it was like, the class met on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Tuesday, you had to bring a monologue and we'd workshop it. And then Thursday, you'd perform it for a grade. Like, every single week. And it's, yeah, and then it's next hard. week, new monologue. And we had to do, like, comedic realism, dramatic realism. Now, do you, do you find these classes to be helpful or do you think, I mean, do you think they, they're needed if you want to get into acting or do you think that a person could be a natural born actor? Um, you know, you can have the talent, but you're going to have to learn how to do it. Right. Like the skill set, you know, for film, I guess you could say, cause you can have someone who's hilarious or whatever, but if they don't know how to do it on film i guess there's a certain way you gotta like go yeah you gotta you gotta transpose it through the the medium so you've learned a lot through these classes oh yeah especially uh especially that acting three one because it taught me how to memorize a lot faster it helped me what is the secret to memorization is there is there (laughs) is there a quick secret because i've never been good at memorizing like i like to memorize really monotone like i'll just read the line like blah 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 like 30 times and then like kind of move on to the next line and then mesh the two together. And I don't know, just mm-hmm. drill it so many times that- where myself, on the other hand, yeah. I'm a, like an audio learner. So I'll record myself reading it kind of monotony. So I don't get in a rhythm of it, Yeah, but then I'll play it in my car and I'll hear it. Cause that's, that's what I've always done. I've always like quoted movies and stuff. That was like my thing. And so I've always been really good at like hearing it and being able to say it. And so I've learned that that's my, fastest way of doing it but honestly it's just like the kind of learner you are like some people i know they'll like draw pictures out and then they'll like read it like a pictograph like charlie on it's always do you see some people in your class that are so determined to be an actor but you tell yourself they have they 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 don't have it yep i mean it's like it's like give up already absolutely Yeah. yeah Which, I mean, you I mean, gotta, you gotta admire them, but I mean, I know that there are a couple people yeah. that came, like the same person came to both Austin and my head from our acting three class. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, 
Not to say what, that what, what do you think? I mean, why, why do you think that they don't have it? And why do you think some people do? Like, what do you think makes some people a better actor than others? Mm. I mean, especially there if you think, if like, you think, okay, if they could take classes, couldn't they just take enough classes and then all of a sudden they're a good actor? It's, you'd think that, but there's people. You who would, I, I think a lot of it's their natural attitude. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like, you can, you can know all the techniques and everything mm -hmm. to act, but it's how re really positive of a person they actually are. Mm -hmm. Because the more positive of a person, the more happy they are with life. It, it, I, I think it comes across when you're watching them audition. I know there's a book. I, I don't know if you've read it, Johnny. I know Austin and I have both read it. Uh, that's about auditioning for film and television. Which and one, one of, I can't remember what a, Mike, Michael Shirtliff's book. No, that, not audition. There's another one. I can't remember who it's by. But one of the things that they mentioned yeah, I don't is think I've read it. when, yeah, you've, you've read that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they mentioned, you know, where so many actors when they move to like LA or somewhere will try to take like a job as a waiter or something like that, mm -hmm. not doing that because those jobs weigh down on you so much. And that when you go into yeah, a casting yeah. director, you know, if you've got shit going on, you don't know how to leave that at the door and you don't know how yeah. to mm -hmm. have that good attitude. Those type of things show. Mm -hmm. uh, and so looking for having those positive things in your life so yeah. that as you're auditioning, you don't have that you, other baggage. You, yeah, to worry you, about. you can, you can have this great attitude. And mm. I mean, we just sat through with, with the directing class that I'm in hours of auditions this last week. And it's like, there would be so many that they'd get up, re go through it once and it was like, yep, yeah, next. Like yeah, I yeah, didn't, I didn't like, need to see see them try it other ways it was just yeah i mean and i think it's really funny when you see people come in with an ego no oh, yeah the they, just think, they just think they just go oh, i'm yeah. i'm i'm the, I'm the next know, big the, thing yeah i'm you the would, gift and what's funny is i've heard they some of them actually are. that they don't know that i work with austin as frequently as i do I actually talk shit on austin really <laughs> because to he, you no like, to, to me and even just to people around them yeah. not realizing it because Austin does get a lot of roles he auditions for, but it's not. <laughs> but because, a lot of people talk shit on him. Yeah, too. but but it's, it's I'll because you know why. It's because he busts nice. his ass. It's not just because he gets some handed to him. It's because he busts his ass. I, well, yeah. I find that in anything, you know, music or yeah. art or I mean, any 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 form of creativity. It's like the people that work the hardest. They're usually in front of the spotlight a little bit more, and then everybody just starts talking you know, garbage and it's yeah. like you got to work hard for what you right. want because it, it is a craft like there are people who have natural ability like i mean tommy yeah. lee jones for example has never taken an acting lesson there's no classes or anything well there's proof that you don't need to take acting lessons in there is but I, there's or classes still, or skills, whatever i'm sure he's, he's learned from people. right there's yeah no but yeah like, being on movies they'll well, i know exactly they'll explain they'll, they'll give him like a up. crash course <laughs> In it, be like, okay, well, this is the terminology. We're gonna have you face this way. This is the camera angle, and deliver it like that. You know, like there are you ways. You gotta be able to repeat stuff. You know, mm -hmm. that's yeah. part of the acting on film, at least, and and theater too, but film especially. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, just to kind of go along with what Tim was saying, like you need that positivity in yourself and like that confidence, honestly, because I mean, you can tell, like you see people walk in and they're nervous and they're scared and they're intimidated by you. It, it that weighs down on you. That's baggage that you yeah. bring. First impressions. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because it is. It's a. It's a job interview. Yes. You're Every like, time for for acting. Yeah. For, yeah. Because uh, how else do you get paid but by acting in something that they'll pay you for? <laughs> so every audition you get, that's a job interview. Yeah. And and you do have to go in there, and show them why you deserve yeah. or can do the job better than anybody else. Do you think a person can make a decent living here in Utah being an actor? It's really hard yeah, it's, it's hard yeah. it's, it's incredible so so pretty much impossible. you're you're right next to the starving student you know it's kind of like probably why <laughs> i'd say so why I, you're, I why you're nervous like... of your parents being supportive because you're like well he's yeah. just gonna starve to death he's right not gonna... uh -huh. which yeah. fortunately for me i have very loving parents well it's and... probably why, why tim wants to move to la so bad because that's kind of the mecca of yeah, yeah, uh, right really. that's the yeah. point you know, like i i'm like i just i'm ready to move to a bigger market you know like, yeah i've done a lot here and i still i mean would love to travel back and forth between the to and do the, the bigger stuff here and you know stuff in LA that's my goal at least short term goal what's well, the beauty of airplanes you know? yeah yeah the right. hop modern technology it's yeah, weird I, yeah. Yeah, I would never imagine well let's you know before we get too rambling Tim I want you to kind of reintroduce yourself in, in since we're talking about the job interview or that was kind of the you know the, <laughs> the main focus here. of why yeah. everybody's here you you kind of did everything with it. You directed it. You yeah. wrote it. Uh, so kind you know just a little reintroduction of yourself. I'll let people you know if they really want to find out about you, go back and listen to uh, the first couple times you were on yeah. the podcast. But just just a little introduction, kind of about yourself uh, in your role with the job interview. So I mean, as most people have known me from some of the podcasts with My House on the Moon 
um, and then with On the Mic. On and the mic then, with Tim Drake. Yeah, on the mic with Tim Drake. Great podcast. I can't recommend it enough to go listen no, to it. Thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, thank anyway, you. sorry, sorry. Aside from, I mean, even kind of the way I got into the podcasting, of course, was I wanted to do stuff in entertainment, and I was listening to stuff with Michael Ian Black and other comedians, and, and so that that really got the ball rolling with a lot of it. Where I decided, you know, I'm going to go to film school. I'm going to start trying to write shows. And while I was living in LA, I, I'm going to interviews out there. I was sitting in one interview. And it was just terrible. I, 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 I'd got there early. They were 20 minutes late getting to me. And the place I was sitting in was just like a dungeon. And, and, <laughs> I, and I just started thinking how terrible it was. And I thought, you know, this would make a funny show. And so I got back to my apartment in Burbank and was sitting, sitting there writing. I mean, I did a lot of writing while I was out there. And at one point, I finally called Austin when it looked like I was going to be coming back to Utah. And said, hey, I have this really funny idea for a show. Yeah. And I think that you'd be great in it, and I want you to work on this. And that show was the job interview. And that interview. show was the job interview. And this, wow. I mean, this is all the way back in August. Yeah. And so I, I sent him the pilot script and just give me your notes on this. Like, you know, tear it apart. If it sucks, it sucks. You know, and I, I'll move on with things. And Austin read it and was like, like he gave me a few little notes of, Hey, why don't we try doing this? Why don't we try doing that? And, but overall, I mean, he loved it and was like, yeah, let's, when you get back, let's yeah. talk more. Let's make this. So after I'd been back for probably two, three weeks, Austin and I sat down and kind of just hashed out like 10 episodes of, of what we could do with it. Yeah, just random ideas. Yeah, and, that would- and just to catch catch people up listening, why don't you kind of give a, like an idea of the show synopsis and, you know, it's going to be a, like a little yeah, like it's a web, be a web se- series. Web series. Yeah. What, what I mean, what's the show about? What's So ba- basically the show is about a guy who has been laid off from his job. Uh, Adam, who Austin plays. I think a lot of us can relate with yeah, that. Yeah, and, right? and, and that was the thing. Is we found it relatable. A lot of people, you know, yeah. e- even though, you know, job creation has still been growing, it's still, I mean, a lot of the nation still is in the crap. Well, and even if it's growing, I think a lot of people, you know, did experience getting laid yeah, off they did experience a few years ago so they can relate with the Or the having to be show. in a crappy job yeah. for a while, mm-hmm. like to fill the void. You know, anything to get a buck. Yeah. Kind of a thing. So, so we knew, we knew it would be relatable with that. And so, so Adam is as out of, out of a job trying to find a job and every interview he goes to, something goes wrong. Either the person is the person interviewing is just, you know, off their rocker or, you know, Adam does something that or gets tied up with something that makes it so the interview goes yeah. wrong. And then his two friends that live with him, who Johnny plays Marcus, and then the character I play is kind of, I mean, it's a main character, but yeah. very subtle. It's funny. <laughs> it, it, his name is Phil. And we try to help him throughout the series, but we always just make matters worse. Phil Phil and Marcus try yeah. to help Adam. And Marcus doesn't even live there, but he... Yeah, Mar- Marcus does. doesn't live there, Pretty but much. he does. He's Marcus is the uh, the apartment complex maintenance guy. But is also one of Adam's good friends, but he never wants to do his job. So he's always into doing something that screws things up. And my character is really off. Uh, I mean, the way we kind of describe him is like Rain Man meets Abed from Community, where he doesn't speak much, but when he does, it's, it's touchy, pretty, so. pretty. Now, do you, do you like acting or directing more than Tim or, or, or what? Uh, I would, I would guess right now it would probably be a lot of the behind the scenes, the directing and, and the producing and the writing. But I mean, the role so far with this has been really, <laughs> really, really fun. I mean, it wasn't yeah. what I expected it to be. So I mean, the fir- the first few things that we've shot, I mean, I've spent both entire episodes in my underwear. So I mean, <laughs> that's been. That's well, been I'm excited to watch it yeah, now. I mean, John, I mean, Johnny spent the entire one one entire episode uh, in his apron and underwear. Nice. And that's all. There's there was nothing else. Yeah, there was nothing else too. <laughs> we we've somehow managed to only post pictures on Facebook of just those. Like, yeah. The scantily clad. The, ones. the pictures of three guys in the bed or with their underwear on. Yeah, right. Their, just, or like in the shower or with the their shower underwear. With the guy in a camera. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh, you know, yeah. which I think is sparking a lot of interest. I don't know if it's the right People are interest. Curious. <laughs> but either way we have their attention. Yeah, the way the way I described it to Austin was my idea of marketing it that way is there's an old episode of The Simpsons <laughs> where uh Krusty's about to have a new act on the show with Gabo the ventriloquist. But all the first thing is that they see on TV is there's just an ad that comes flashing across and just goes, Gabo, Gabo, Gabo. <laughs> and then it just, that's it. And all Homer and Bart just sit there like, what the hell was that? 
And then they just keep having these random things just say Gabo is coming, but nobody knows what Gabo is. And so I wanted to take that same approach of these just random compromising pictures of people just going, what the hell is this? Yeah. And <laughs> people were posting and, those yeah, exact and words And that's exactly what we started to get. And it's like, we got a great response right away on Facebook, but nobody knows what exactly yeah. Yeah, what it is. <laughs> yeah, so is, is there a Facebook page then for yeah, the yes. job interview then? Mm-hmm. The job like people interview. can go like it and become a fan. Of yes. it. I'll, yeah. I, I don't know if I have yet. I'll have to uh, yeah, check it out. I, th- I thought I, I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know I, the listeners. I've had probably close to a dozen people since the Facebook page came up because I invited everybody I know. Well, of course. Like yeah, it. Yeah. And since then, I've had so many people. Now, listen, Johnny what's this job interview thing about? <laughs> because yeah. I went and liked it. It looks like you're doing some acting thing, but what is it? Because <laughs> yeah. all I've seen is you pretty much naked. <laughs> yeah. Usually oh, yeah. in a bed with, is two it, other you guys. know, some kind of porn or something. Right. Yeah. No, they're like, yeah, my yeah. grandma, like anything for a quick buck, you know, <laughs> I, I have a brother in law, <laughs> struggling who, student, right? brother in law who loves to, to tease me. And there is a day of, like every Sunday we always go to my grandma's. I wasn't there, but they were all there. And apparently he got on Facebook and saw one of the pictures and he showed like my entire extended family and my grandma legit thought I was getting into gay porn. And she was like, <laughs> He better not be getting into gay well, porn. Well, there's a lot of money and, in that though. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, it, that's a very select group of people who are participating yeah. in that and you know, the demand is high, I'm well, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I think there's, I think there's a great future for you there, Johnny. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Look into it. If not, maybe, I mean, it's not for everyone. For sure. I don't know. But, yeah. So anyways, it, they, they, <laughs> so anyways, before we get too far into that, and, but well, there's uh, anything wrong with that. So anyway, the job interview. Now there's no, there, there hasn't. The first episode has not been posted yet, right? No, the pilot episode. The pilot episode. Um, and yeah. you saw one of the little clips. Yeah, of that. we were watching some of it before we started recording here, so I got um, a little taste. The, of that it. first episode will come out uh, the first week of March. Um, kind of in correlation with the Kickstarter. Yeah, let's let's that, talk about all this. That we'll yeah. be launching with that. Um, and, and the biggest reason for the Kickstarter is really to help help the show kind of flourish and be able to have funding. Yeah. But it's also with the show, we're trying to make sure that everybody on it um, will earn their SAG cards. Yes. Mm-hmm. Earn, earning your SAG card. And for those that don't know what SAG is, it's the Screen Actors Guild. It's especially being in Utah. It's a really difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. Being in Utah, it's a difficult thing to yes. do, Both. or or I mean, just being in, in general, Utah, it's extra difficult. Why? Why is that? Why? <laughs> because there's not a lot of SAG productions that come through here. So a lot of stuff I've heard are, a lot of films though are made here though. A lot of films are made here, but that doesn't make them. But they're they're but, and, they, and they get all of the pieces like the together outside of Utah. Like the films that come through here, like The Lone Ranger, like you know these big shows, and then they don't cast really any Utah. Talent. They, they, they find everybody yeah. in L. A. and yes. all that stuff, and then they just film here for the location for the scenery. Yes. Yeah, and for the discount of and, filming it. And to well, get yeah. your <laughs> SAG card, you have to have what is it? So many. You have lines. to have so many lines. So. In a show. So it's like, I actually auditioned for The Lone Ranger. I actually was, was part of, of this very small casting of that. And I mean, all it was for that they were even doing was for the freak show mm-hmm. that, that was part of it. And even with what they used of that footage was like hardly anything. Yeah. So, so it's and, and, and it was hard. just like, it was like those were only extra roles. Nobody that got those were going to be speaking. And, yeah, and it was yeah, and, and so it, it's like you wouldn't have earned your SAG card on that, and you can earn your SAG card as an extra, but you have to do it as like I think it's like four consecutive days as a SAG extra. I mean, you have to be contracted as that, and I mean that's even more difficult <laughs> to 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 do yeah. than just simply you know earning your SAG card. So, but I mean, I think it took even yeah. George Clooney like three productions when he first started acting to even get his SAG card. Yeah, I'm and, pretty sure. I don't know if this is true. I've heard of this of like Brad Pitt trying to get his and he was an extra on something and he was like a waiter. Yeah. And he like tried to throw in a line and he almost got fired. Yeah. I, like, I'd heard yeah. that too because I mean, they have to, to be covered and make everything SAG eligible. I mean, there's so many different finances, so many different contracts that have to go into it. Yeah. Where if it's already a SAG production, the forms that they have to fill out, they have to pay to be submitting that for somebody that's non union. Interesting, interesting. And so, I mean, there's so, so yeah, many. It's so complicated, but you need. Yeah, not to, not to get too inside baseball here, because uh, I'm sure most people are going, "What the hell?" Are you yeah, <laughs> and yeah, this yeah, is yeah, how yeah. movies are made. Yeah. yeah, and this is how movies are made, anyways. But uh, so, let, let's talk about the Kickstarter. Obviously, it, it hasn't been launched yet at the time of this recording and everything. So, you know, there's no links, but you know, and I'll post the links on on my right. personal Facebook, on the I Am Salt Lake Facebook, Twitter, and the whole nine yards, so people can 
get connected? What What are you hoping to get accomplished with the Kickstarter? What What is it? The, the biggest thing really is just to make sure that we can fund fund all of the shoots. So be able to actually, you know, have have some bigger name local actors and stuff. But I mean, we we want to make it so that Utah actors have that outlet. Whereas, I mean, the the way that we're even being able to do this is through the new media portion of SAG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where, I mean, really it's <laughs> not that it's not insanely difficult because it has been insanely difficult so far. But I mean, <laughs> the ball and everything's rolling and I mean, it's going to happen. But now it's just a matter of we still have to make sure our actors are at least paid. Yeah, so they, and it's not like normal SAG wages. Which, which I mean, that's, God. that's why <laughs> you don't think you can find actors and not pay them. I mean, is that pretty much? Well, it? he found two of them right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, well, that's what I mean. I mean, you guys seem pretty chill. I no, mean, there's you, plenty. Of people, yeah, yeah, no, there's plenty of people that'll do it. But to be able to be part of SAG, you have to still be paid. I got you. And so that's that's the biggest thing is okay, that okay. we want we want actors in Utah. You know, there's a lot of good ones out there that deserve to have that credibility behind them. And so, and so we want to be able to bring that to the table and, and let, let those good actors be able to become SAG eligible and, and become part of just a fun production too. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, we well, think this is a lot of fun. And I just we want to make it to a good something. show, really get yeah. our names out there. That's the main thing. Mm-hmm. And in the process, hopefully get our SAG card. And you do know, you know, I mean, obviously you haven't launched it. Do you know, I mean, is there, do you have an idea what the goal is, what you're going to try to reach on Kickstarter or is that um, I been mean, undecided yet? A pro, you know, around four or five thousand dollars. I mean, we're still hashing out the final details on what we on yeah. what we need to make. And I mean, really, I I don't want people to think it's oh they just they they want to get money for this so they can get paid. I mean, that's a very small portion of it. We want to be able oh, to make yeah. sure that this is a good production. Absolutely, and it costs money to you know make yeah. movies to make get some some good lighting and some. So and and, and when I say like for that. us to get paid too, I mean it's money. the pay that we have to be able to make on it for us is minimum wage, and that's what we're doing is making minimum wage, and I'm actually forfeiting my pay on it so that we can use that money to be able to put it into the the production value. So and, and be able to make something that's that's great. And do you know like a, any idea of like rewards or anything people are? Gonna yeah, get we've actually they, we were if hashing they, out a if bunch they of bump them. over a few bucks. Like if I like what what are, do you, do you know what the brackets are going to be? Yeah, we, we we actually worked all those out uh, this last week even. And I mean, starting at five dollar brackets, where they'll get their name, you know, in the credits and everything for really? an episode. Um, and they'll get, you know, like stickers and, and just like little, little teeny things at the beginning for only five bucks though. Yeah. For only five bucks, get your name in the credits. I mean, everybody wants to see their names and names in the credits. Well, I'm going to at least do it. So what's, well, yeah, what else? So, oh, um, right, five bucks. I, I, yeah, there you I go. You at least it. got five yeah. bucks yeah. for me. I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of, like you know, they've got like make a personal, uh, yeah, personal ringtones. Ringtone. <laughs> Yeah, like where like we would basic sing and infor- record information for yeah. people, and then somehow. And how much is that one? I want that one. <laughs> I want to say that one. Like twenty five or fifty. Yeah, it's like twenty twenty five bucks with the personalized ringtones, and of course, you know, with Kickstarter. Yeah. You know, right. everything that that you do, the higher up it, it goes, you still get everything in the earlier increments. Yes. So oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah. you you would still get your name in the credits and the sticker pack, and I know one of them yeah. that we have is a personalized postcards. So could I get like <laughs> I am Salt Lake in the credits instead of my yeah. own name? Okay. Okay. Now we're yeah, talking personalized, man. Personalized. personalized. Yeah. Oh, so so okay. So you can have a say anything. Yeah. yeah. So so what, so whatever you want your credit to be in there, that's what we're that's what we're gonna give you. So, but yeah, and then we have personalized postcards because we have a lot of really funny stills <laughs> from from the set. I mean. Some of them of Johnny in his apron and underwear, or smelling was, the dog poop, or yeah, or like smelling that. the dog poop from one up from one of the episodes, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's in, in the in the I pilot it, episode, I walk out in my sleep in my underwear and eat a donut because my character uh, <laughs> can smell food in his sleep it's because still, yeah. he's heavily medicated because he makes money being an a test medication subject. Nice. <laughs> so, so yeah, my, great, my character, great living. Yeah. yeah my, my, my character is extra odd with that, with that aspect. Yeah. But so it's like, we have a lot of really hilarious stills mm. that we're like, we can make these into postcards. I think it'd be funny. We'd make a calendar too. Yeah. Like and we, yeah. we yeah. joked yeah. about making yeah. a, well, it. Was like swimsuit and edition. Stuff. And the yeah. thing yeah. is, is that I don't it's think a lot of people it. realize with Kickstarter is, I mean, if, I mean, obviously, you guys want to reach your goal, but it's like if you don't reach your goal, they don't have to pay anything. So it's like, uh-huh. they, you know, at least pledge something. Yeah, you know, because it's like if we don't, you might not meet your goal. You know, it's not like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and realistically, with the amount of Facebook fans that we already have, I mean, if they all donated as little as ten dollars, we would pretty much meet our goal. 
Because kicks it doesn't take it out until it's over. Yeah, until it's over. over. Yeah, you just have to pledge your credit card mm-hmm. or, or yeah. something like. Because mm-hmm. I mean, you've had success with Kickstarter with the My House. Yeah, on with the, moon. the My House on the Moon book. Yeah, yeah. So and I mean, and more and more thing, independent artists yeah. are doing that through Kickstarter. And like yeah. I'd so even mentioned, outlet. you know, the last time we talked with with what what we did with My House on the Moon is we and we're doing the same thing with this is we know the bare minimum that we need to do to be able to make sure that everybody gets their stuff and and still that we're able to you know make our show. And so it's not like we're, pl- you know, putting out these just egregious amounts. I mean, Austin and I were looking at <laughs> fifty grand at some this. of these other web series and stuff that are up on Kickstarter. And yeah, they've put up there like fifty grand that they need, and they've they yeah, have like yeah. half of the half the <laughs> way to go, and they're only at like three thousand dollars. And so it's like, I mean, what with what our amounts going to be? It's, I mean, it's the bare minimum, but it's what we need to at least be able to make our show and to make sure everybody else still is able to have a good time and and be part of this production. Now, now I got a question with Kickstarter. I've always been curious of this. Like, can you, if you start a Kickstarter at say ten thousand dollars and you just see it's not going well, can you change that once it's going? I don't believe so. Because you know, like, but like I've I remember when I used to run an that. eBay <laughs> auction, you could, you know, you started at ten dollars and you're like, yeah, it's not getting like, any att- attraction, so I'm going to bounce it down to five dollars. No, I don't or, think you can change your uh, your goal. No, you you can, may be able to change your like because I know you could change some of the rewards of yeah, and the stuff rewards like that. Stuff. You can add new ones, but I didn't know. I've and, always wondered. I'm like, I wonder if somebody could just change it like on the last day to whatever. No, amount I don't think they, I don't. I'm pretty sure you cannot do that. Otherwise, yeah. everybody would be yeah, every, everybody would be hitting their goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Snipe them. <laughs> what do you, I mean? What do you what do you see? I mean, I'm sure you watch Kickstarter a lot, Tim, just because you've done it, and I'm sure you try to learn. What, what do you see as like? Why do you think some Kickstarters are more successful than others? I really think it will come down to the prizes. I mean, the more interactive yeah. some of the prizes. I know one of them that we've put on there, I think it's for like $100. And I mean, it's pretty much only if people are in Utah, since that's where we're currently filming, is, you know, they, they can be on the set. They get a day on set. So okay, I'm to doing come watch everything what, what, film. <laughs> what do we, what, it's, what do we, it's so fun being yeah, on the set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and where, where is set at? I mean, you're recording show. here in Tim's Utah, kitchen. right? Tim's <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I've, I've already been there. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Tim's yeah. kitchen. Well, this this <laughs> is my new place. I mean, this oh, is, you're in a new place. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a better location. I, I really think than what we would have had before, but I mean, <laughs> we've, we've had, we've had a great time so far. Oh yeah. It's like, cause we just, we just, dork around so much uh, yeah i mean we could probably have like five <laughs> episodes filmed if we just like stuck to the basics but we just get austin and i just get off on such <laughs> side notes and crap, and like yeah. and tim will just let it roll just let it yeah. go like <laughs> yeah. keep like and gavin's me. all willing to film it so yeah. it's, yeah. it's yeah. Right. probably right there in front of you and how how many episodes i mean do you do you anticipate a certain amount or are you just going to kind of go we as have long 10 as 10 episodes planned out for this season and that may get cut down kind of depending on how much money we raise because, I mean, again, we have to make sure that, you know, yeah. the actors on each episode are paid. We have to make sure that, you know, the people working in post-production are, you know, going to be able to get paid. I mean, we've got a great editor, Zach Allred, that's working on this. And, you know, we have to make sure that, that he's going to be able to get covered. Gavin Pouquet, who's, you know, our director of photography that's with us on everything. I mean, we have to make sure that he that he gets paid. So he's actually going to come with us today to be part of this and ended up yeah. having other stuff kind of pull him away and... But I mean, we, we need to make sure that the people that are, you know, busting their asses behind the scenes, yeah, you know, are, are getting taken care of too mm-hmm. and that are sure. able to make this into the show that we want. They're yeah, the, I, they're the unsung heroes, you know, you gotta. <laughs> yeah. People don't realize that with movies. I mean, yeah, they do, but they don't really give enough credit to mm-hmm. the, the editors. Well, mm-hmm. and... They do get an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so, but Oscar no one knows their like, name. No one knows yeah. what they look like. like. Oh yeah. The, the guy, the editor, he's my favorite. Well, was it last you know? year? I think that it was Probably like the not. sound, the sound, the cinematography and the um, editing one were all like these like really long haired guys. Yeah. And the, yeah. like, that looks like they just stepped out of Lord of the Rings as Gandalf stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> so once the first episode drops, how often do you pl- plan? I mean, like, is there a schedule? Like every, Every week, every two weeks. Well, we're going to do the first two, right? With Kickstarter. Yeah, with with Kickstarter so that people can get a taste of, of what it is. Yeah. Oh, so uh, people on the Kickstarter page, you're going to post the two episodes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to it. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, have yeah. the first few episodes so that people can understand, you know, what it is, yeah, what we've got going. I mean, I'll be honest. I wouldn't want to really donate to something that I don't have an idea of what yeah, it's about. Right. So we'll give them the first episode or two. And then people can be like, all right, I like this, or this has potential, yeah. or, you know, I liked this bit, and, you know. And then, hopefully. and then from there, I mean, we kind of hope to kind of do what, you know, you've seen Netflix and Hulu do, where the whole binge watching. Yeah. So people can sit down and watch it all at once and be, and be able to, you know, kind of get wrapped into everything 
from there. I, I love the Netflix mini or the yeah. series out there. I, they just announced the new uh, Orange is the New Black. Yeah, Orange is the New Black coming, coming back in June. June. Yeah, so, oh, Second season of House of Cards just, House of Cards just came out on Friday. And yeah. I, haven't, I haven't watched that one yet. Yeah. I, everybody oh, says I need to watch it. Everybody oh, says I need to watch it. That, and House of Cards honestly was very inspirational to to even even the direction that I put this in. And I remember sending Austin a link to a, a speech that Kevin Costner no, not Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Spacey. <laughs> Kevin Spacey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. House of Cards. All of a sudden, I was, like, uh, I was like, wait. Did no, we go to feel the dreams not, here? He did not yeah. build a baseball yeah. film in yeah. House of Cards. Yeah. <laughs> do you think more series needs to do that? Do you think more need to like just come out with them all at once? Because that's, I mean, I love like going, that's that's why I like Netflix and stuff. Because it's like, that's I, can get in, I can get into a show and it's like, like, I don't have to wait a week for it to come yeah, out. Yeah, that's kind of how the way that, that we've shifted as people watching yeah. the TV shows. It's like, Okay, I'm gonna hunker down on my Saturday and Sunday and just plow through this whole season. Absolutely, of the show. just just lock myself in Marathon the marathon style, and, and yeah. But some of those shows too are even now being picked up. We're like Broad City, that's that came out. That's uh, executive produced by Amy Poehler. That was initially a web series, and those girls actually do a comedy tour and stuff that I know they're they're currently going on tour for. They were even on At Midnight the other night, um, you know, showing off some of their comedy. But they're now a Comedy Central show. But they initially started that as a web series. <laughs> it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's always sunny. Did in Philadelphia. that start as a web series? It wasn't so much a web series, yeah. but they it was they like a sh- home video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They basically really shot it like a home video, video and they entered it as a contest it. and and won the contest, and that's how their show got made. So maybe you'll get picked up with <laughs> a, the job with, interview that, 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 in a perfect be, world. Christopher Nolan might look into this. Yeah, one. yeah. He, Christopher, yeah. Christopher Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, 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 we like seeing right. <laughs> with, you know, social media and the way James that Cameron. Netflix and Hulu and that <laughs> was working that we realized, you know, this is a great medium for us to be able to take this. And in the thing with Kevin Spacey, you know, he'd mentioned how with House of Cards, it wasn't a normal format, you know, in most pilot episodes, the way that pilots are written, you're supposed to know who every single character is by the end of that pilot. And I mean, that's why sometimes you'll see a pilot yeah, and then like watch really the forced. rest of like the rest stuff. of a series, yeah, and they're really, really forced. And you're like, oh, that that pilot episode didn't really even make a ton of sense to who. Mm. I mean, a great pilot. I mean, some of the great pilots that I've even seen as I go back and watch a lot of them is like Community had a fantastic pilot. Malcolm in the Middle has a brilliant pilot. Oh, I think yeah. it even won an Emmy for its pilot. But so many of them, you know, just don't have good pilots. And I really liked how Kevin Spacey broke it down and said, we didn't want to go that format. We wanted you to at least have an idea, but be able to grow with these characters over a season. And that's really what House of Cards does. And yeah, so that's what we wanted. Throwing it at the people. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. let's kind of figure it and out. And that's what we wanted to do with them. this. And it's like, I still think you get a good idea of who the characters oh, absolutely. are in this <laughs> first, first episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's very. I'm in the shower and you get a good idea of yeah. kind of who these guys are. Yeah. But I mean, my character in the first episode, I'm in there for. Five ten seconds, <laughs> yeah. So that, I mean that that's it. And how, how long are the shows going to be about? Between between, I mean, most of them are going to stick to about ten minutes. The pilot will probably be just a hair longer, um, but most of them, uh, the second episode is yeah. is ten minutes at best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and how long does a ten minute? How long does that take to make a oh, ten gosh. minute? Day? Oh gosh, I mean, because like I said, we're, like we were there all day, and that's I, with like no lighting or anything, just us walking around with the camera. All right, let's bang this out and this. Yeah, out. because like, you know, because we don't have the funding, set, we have to like make sure that we can trick the lighting and we can trick the shot because we yeah. don't have all the rigs to set up. We don't have all the lighting to set up. Yeah, and it's like we have some access, you know, through the school. But we don't have the extra crew to be able to <laughs> yeah. to man it to, to man it. So it's like to be able to knock out an episode mm-hmm. in a day. I mean, it takes all day long. I mean, the second episode, it's pretty much just in the apartment, but it still took to make sure that we were getting the right shots or getting the right look. It took all day long. It was mm-hmm. an eight hour shoot for an eight minute video. And like, and you guys are doing this while you're going to school, while you're working mm-hmm. regular jobs. I mean, you're you know that's mm-hmm. that's impressive. Living the dream. And like, I had to. <laughs> Cause, uh, cause we are so shorthanded. I mean, there were so many times I had to run sound yeah. or I had to you market or to run sound. I got to run sound. Yeah. It was an honor was, and a privilege. Yeah. And I thank Tim Drake every day <laughs> when I kneel at the foot of my bed for such an opportunity. Well, you can put it on your LinkedIn sound. profile. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 One of my many IMDb yeah. aliases. Um, <laughs> another thing that, that makes it so hard to get through filming an episode is that tim has a cat <laughs> and, oh, God. and and i'm allergic to oh. cats and so uh my gosh that one where we were filming we were in a bed and yeah. like <laughs> apparently we the cat in sleeps in the bed because it was just riddled 
with cat dander <laughs> and i was just yeah. like and it's not it's usually not that bad but like once it gets going dude oh my like, gosh it just like, doesn't stop some of the shots if you notice in episode two his nose will be it's rudolph cal oh, <laughs> because <laughs> because Rami. all day like we'd film do one take and i'm like i'll be right back run to the bathroom blow my nose and then go and so it's just it was just raw by the end I'm, of the day i'm pretty sure you went through a whole roll of toilet yeah. oh i owe tim <laughs> i owe tim some toilet paper for so if the cat shows up missing people kind of know where to go yeah mm-hmm. what's like, funny is the cat is the cat added some hilarious aspects to it <laughs> on accident. like on accident but it's like it's the something perfect the time the, yeah, the timing. timing is ideal let's just Paramount. say there was a meow yeah <laughs> so i mean ba- basically without giving too much away the second episode is a horror movie spoof <laughs> yeah that's strongly based on the fact of my character eating in his sleep it's which you uh, do in real life i hear yeah, yeah i do in real life i mean it's amazing the things that i've eaten in my sleep huh so i mean yeah that's cool yeah, that explains my, my excessive <laughs> weight gain. I blame it on. I blame it on. You wake up with a half-eaten sandwich on your chest. You're like, chest oh man, I, just, I have no recollection. It's amazing when I wake up with like Del Taco or something in bed, and you're like, how did so, I even get yeah, there? Yeah, I don't even know how how it got there. And I walk outside, and my car's parked on the neighbor's lawn, and <laughs> I mean, it explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you have a drinking habit there. <laughs> yeah, we won't, we won't we won't go into that one. <laughs> right. He's got drinking; he has no problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got drinking. But the like the the cat, the, Austin and Johnny are walking out, you know, trying trying to find where my where my character is, and they have like the spear and and a Nerf gun, and yeah, I mean it's it's a really intense scene. And then all of a sudden, randomly, like as they're getting to kind of the climax, then you see this. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) because it's like it's like super quiet. It's like it's like like, almost like we're actually scared both of them. And so both of them actually jumped and screamed at the same time. And it was just like the timing was so perfect. And then as we talked about, we're like, no, we're going to leave that in (laughs) because (laughs) in so many horror movies, they have that random stupid cat that's running around somewhere. (laughs) So like it makes it even funnier because you don't see the cat. Yeah, you just hear it. Is like, <laughs> a cat in the credits too? Right, she will be. Little yeah. one. Yeah. Little I one. mean, I have my two cats, but it's always my cat, little one, that that it's, always has to make. Oh, you have two cats. It's, yeah. <laughs> That's why you're like no wonder <laughs> that explains it. There's well, two of those devils. For 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 John for Johnny's props though, never did he ruin a scene or a shot. With a sneeze, we would we would be in between takes, and he was sneezing left Rapid and fire. right. Just, <laughs> just but, but never did he never did he ruin a shot by sneezing. And th- there's what there's one spot in it where right as we called cut, like he he delivered all the way <laughs> until the very end, falls to the ground. We cut, and luckily I kept the sound rolling for like ten seconds. But we cut and just. Says, ah! It was like the most stereotypical sneeze. sneeze. Like, Achoo! I'm a loud sneezer. Yeah, I, I really am. But yeah, I mean, it was. Still. It shows how great of an actor he is that he can, hold, he can hold back his sneeze. <laughs> so, so Tim, who would be like a dream actor to have in the job interview? Ooh. Like, who who would be like just your <laughs> that you just think would be <laughs> aw- play awesome in it? You know, that would just do awesome in it if if you could get them. Uh, honestly, Bill, yeah, Bill Murray's. Uh-huh. And Jonah Hill. Okay, I love Jonah Hill. He's so I, so I think well, those they're both movies. listeners of the podcast. Of course. So, so yeah. if well, they, naturally, if they're if they're listening, maybe they'll hit you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill. Hey, it, what is it? Donate like a, like a thousand dollars, and you get the featured. <laughs> Like you, you are an extra with a line. It's even less than that. I think, I think it was like would love to be two. Oh, so that's gonna be one of your Kickstarter things. People can actually be yeah. in it. We yeah. write them in as like a character oh with a line. I am yeah. so there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am there. Yeah, that, that, that one. I think is like two hundred and fifty bucks. Like right. not only are you an extra, but you'll get a line. You'll, you'll get, get your a, sad card. <laughs> and you, you mean a speaking line, line yeah. not like another kind of line. That, no, anyway, no, yeah, that, like, that's a little more than two hundred fifty bucks. To, yeah, to provide those lines. Well, but. you know, I know how actors are. <laughs> right, yeah. for sure. Their, you got to. I mean, their burning lines. the midnight oil. You got to keep alert and ready to go. <laughs> he, he's he's got it. He, he knows what he knows what's up. Anyways, so so the best ways for people to find out about the Kickstarter probably even follow the job interview Facebook. Yeah, page. we'll have a Twitter we'll, we'll, shortly here, as well. and you'll have a Twitter, and I'll I'll try to get all the links on the uh, I am Salt Lake dot com uh, show notes. Um, anything else you want to add no, before we add was it? Did we did we kind of touch on everything about the? Uh, yeah, about I mean, that, the that's, film? that's the gist of of the job interview, and I mean also some of the other 
few prizes. I mean, if you ever wanted to be a producer of a film, and <laughs> once you get up to like a thousand dollars donating, you know, you'll be listed as a producer, not just for like one episode, but for the full season. And yeah, I mean, we'll throw you up on IMDb for that. Uh, like, you, you, I mean, you, you want to see your name in the internet lights. That would be, <laughs> you know, that would internet be great. Light. Uh, like if you're, if you're trying to, you know, impress a lady or, oh, uh, yeah. you know, I can't tell you how many times I use that. Cause I, yeah. I did a film that was put in the Logan film festival in 2012 and they were like, they sent an email to me and they're like, Hey, I bet you think this is pretty cool. I don't know. I think it's cool. We're on IMDb. I lost it. I was like ecstatic and I was telling everybody I saw, yeah. especially the lady folk. And then yeah. they couldn't find him because his name was misspelled. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and now I'm on there. Yeah. I'm on there for three different films, but it's three different names. IMDb. Because what, what do they misspell? Like the H, they add an H or an um, O? Well, or? yeah. Cause, cause my name's Johnny Burnett. It's spelled J O N N Y B Y R N E. And so a lot of people throw the H in there, but I always correct them on that. Like they never mess that up once I tell them. But if I tell them how to spell the last name, it's like, I think one time, I think I might be on the job interview as Brian, like B R Y N E. And then on another film project that I did, I'm Johnny Burns, B U R N S. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like you really like like like, who earns? like, <laughs> like a fire burns i don't know but like i mean trying to make a living out here and <laughs> you can't like, make a like <laughs> i try you're, you're I, dying I, over here right? <laughs> and not in your face the struggle is real like you know if i like like say like for example someone's like i really like this kid i wonder if he's on imdb and they just can't find me <laughs> or like i tell him i have him on my resume like oh this this and this and like oh let's check out Okay, so he's lying. Is IMDb pretty important? I mean, is that is it that to, I mean, to a degree? It's it important to me. To you, it it's is. It's important. And to your mother, I mean, it's I'm a sure. Professional yes. website My mom is check. very proud that she has a son on IMDb. Yeah, I would be. She has a bumper sticker. My son. Yeah, my is son on is on IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> right next to my son is not an honor student. We should make those stickers. Yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> my, my mom would. What's that. funny though is we now oh, have a dude. set piece that will make it so nobody can misspell Johnny's last name. Because we were trying to decorate, like, you know, this is like some, you know, college guy's apartment. Like, we have movie posters and stuff that's up. And I have a vintage Superman comic that's, I, I think it's like number 167 or something like that. But the writer of its last name is Burn, spelled exactly like Johnny's last name. Nice. We threw it in. And so, <laughs> and so, yeah, it's in one of the shots. It's up on the wall. And it'll be anytime we're in the apartment, it's going to be in that shot. But, yeah, it actually has the correct spelling of his last name. <laughs> And, and is it just going to be youtube.com slash the job interview or job interview? Is that going to be the site or is it going to be part of like top flight? Uh, um, it'll, it'll still be with top flight. So like, you know, people can go to topflightpictures.com and they'll be able to find some of the info on the website because there's, I don't know if you've seen these website pirates that are out there. If you search like a popular name. People will actually buy the domain and then try to sell it to you for like $15,000. Have you had that happen? Yeah. You? Really? Like that's why I don't have timdrake.com is because they tried to sell it to me for $15,000. Nice. And so like I actually have the real timdrake.com. Do, do you think some, <laughs> do, do some people actually fork over the money for that? I'm sure some people do to a degree. I'm sure some of the celebrities that need their website, I'm sure they have because it's just not worth having to go through the battle of. Yeah the legal process of trying to actually get that. And so like we had tried to get the job interview.com and like I sent it through like the web server and everything and it said it was available. Really? And then they said, but somebody else has it and we'll get back to you. So, and then do they contact the owner and then that's yeah. how the owner knows to contact you? Yeah. And so like, we've never heard anything back on that. I'm like, in the wrong YouTube. business. I need to start buying <laughs> websites. We have our right? YouTube yeah. channel. Uh, apparently there's a lot of money in yeah. URLs. Yeah. Like we have our YouTube channel that we'll give you the links for that people will yeah. be able to go to that and they'll be able to see some of the outtakes. I know one of them that we're going to put up is Johnny's actual audition <laughs> oh, for the oh, show. My God. Oh gosh. Because we <laughs> like, I, I, I'd only briefly met Johnny. Um, mm -hmm. but Austin had worked with him on, on a play and was like, dude, you have to see this guy. <laughs> and so when he auditioned, it, 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 the best part of the audition is that he had just come from a theater piece that they had to do for one of their acting classes. And so he actually has face makeup on for a, doing a scene from Tropic Thunder. Yeah, don't so do it doesn't even audition. fit with the <laughs> audition. And it's just, he was doing Robin Williams golf bit. <laughs> it's just, Austin and I have watched it probably three or four times and it, we just die laughing every single time. It's the face every time. Yeah, it's, and, and part of it's the, the makeup on the face. Oh, I'm sure. That's, that'll be up on the YouTube. Like we'll put up some, some of the, uh, <laughs> run throughs of some of this. It'll be, gosh. We, we were watching through a shot the other day, um, from the second episode 
where these guys are supposed to just be terrified and they're looking for my character. And Gavin accidentally pans the camera for a second where their eyeline is. And I'm in the shot, but I'm not in character. I'm just kind of standing there. <laughs> Tim's in the just, shot, yeah, Tim, but yeah, Phil's I'm, not. Yeah, Tim is in the shot. Yeah, Phil, my character, is not. And I'm just going to stand in there just it's like, so um... Funny. Camera's not supposed to be on me right now. I'm like, what and then is it just that? like it quickly it <laughs> hits him. Yeah, that's all, that's exactly what Austin says. Is, what is that? And all of a sudden it pans to me, and I'm just like, <laughs> the camera wasn't supposed to pan. Uh, what am I doing right now? Yeah. <laughs> so it quickly goes back to him. But <laughs> yeah, we'll have, we'll have a lot of blooper outtakes as well. So. That's oh, the yeah. best part of watching really. movies and TV oh, yeah. shows these yeah. days is hoping they add the bloopers on the end mm, of yep. the. And and that would be what's so fun about being on the set for a day yeah because i mean there's still only so many bloopers like we would choose like the best of the best or our favorites or whatever but i mean there's so much (laughs) witty banter and antics that go on throughout the day (laughs) just with us like (laughs) yeah i mean there was one time austin we were just like goofing off while he was in the shower as as awesome as that sounds but we were doing a scene where he's in the shower and he's wearing a swimming suit and and but like they don't tell they had they (laughs) spoiler alert um (laughs) and they had to uh they had to like fix something. I think they had to like dump all the footage or whatever, but we were just sitting there and we were just like, I mean, just fooling around for like 15 minutes, just like playing off each other. And that's one thing that I love about this is that I feel like Austin and I have really good cast chemistry. Yeah. Just because we have, I mean, we had that class together and we kind of came close there just because we're pretty similar in, in a lot of regards. Not to say like, well, we were the two good ones in the class and everybody else was the lessers and so we had to band together as the talent because I mean, that, cause, cause segregation that's, right because that's not true there was a lot of good people in that class Sorry, but walk and flip into right oh, <laughs> i've arrived <laughs> but um that is how we arrived to set now somebody. yes but i mean like you know early <laughs> on like trailer. austin caught my eye as like my competition <laughs> in the class i caught your eye yeah <laughs> yeah and and it was just kind of a you know from there and so i I always would like pit myself up against him. And then when he told me, he's like, listen, dude, uh, we're doing this thing. And I told Tim, uh, how funny you were. And I think, I think you'd be good at it. You should come audition. And, you know, I was like, that's awesome. You know, I was, I was flattered that, you know, he thought of me. And then, you know, oh. our really, yeah. Oh, and then, you know, our, uh, that's, that, that's a touching story. Yeah. yeah. And then our, you know, our relationship has really just flourished from it's there. Awesome. I got his number a couple months ago. Facebook friends. Yeah. We're Facebook friends. It's official. And, uh, they, they are Facebook official. We are Facebook, Facebook official th- friends. That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it's awesome. And it, it's great. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it really, <laughs> relationship is just building that camaraderie really helps with the show, I think, you know, cause being able to play off each other like that, you We're know, all pretty similar. Gavin, it's, DP. It's probably know, why Tim. you even see like in major movies, you'll see a lot of the same actors mm-hmm. on yeah. uh, mm-hmm. films together. Like, cause they, the, they like learn the, Owen the chemistry. Wilson, ben Stiller. Yeah. They Directors learn the chemistry with, with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Like the, you know, they've got that, that chemistry with them. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And it's, you know, it's very, and that's why I've even worked with Austin on several projects is because Austin and I, we know how to work. Together. We we know how to work together as like director and actor. And mm-hmm. See, I thought yeah. it was because he was willing to work for free. But yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, I'm sure that doesn't hurt. But yeah, you get those like just, Tim Burton, Johnny Depp's, where it's yeah. like, oh, Tim Burton's coming out with a movie. A movie. Johnny Depp's going to be the lead. Helena Bonham Carter's going to be the lead female. You know, it's <laughs> like that's just the way of the world. But like, you know, that's kind of how. You know, it, it I works with that. Why, for sure. Right. But. but at the same time, I'm sure it's helpful to learn to act with new people Absolutely. because yeah. you, you're you going to, know. especially as you're in the film industry, you're going to be constantly put in front of new people mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. So, and everybody has a different way of working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and we've made some great contacts because of that. Because of, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's just, it's so nice working with Austin because we do have that friendship and stuff. And, you know, there are some people that I've worked with in the past where it's like, I don't know you know, what I can do or like what they can do. Like we just weren't on the same you wavelength. Don't offend them right. Yeah. And, but like with Austin, like the more we work together, like our, the trust <laughs> of what I can do, like I trust that if I do something and like throw him a bone that may not be in the script, like he'll send it right back and like we can play off each other really well. And it's just, it's well, we've done that in the show too. I mean, there's lines that just kind of even have an, have an ongoing joke. In the show that was not initially in the script. Yeah, it's just coming mm-hmm. out. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, as it, as it came about, we we're like, oh my gosh, that's that's absolutely hilarious. Like we have to leave that in there. <laughs> and yeah, now now it's a running joke in the yeah. show. <laughs> How can people find everybody? Uh, I know Tim's got his 
uh, Tim Drake on t- what? What is your Twitter name? You got so At many Tim tw- Drake. How many Twitter accounts do you have, Tim? <laughs> you, you got there, quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, there's there's my personal one at Tim Drake. There's at on the mic podcast. There is the and, House on the Moon one. And, <laughs> and mention on the mic podcast. Uh, you're still putting episodes out for that for yeah, people we have, listening. I mean, we've had a lot of really good ones. We've had you know most recently we had Seth Herzog from Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, um, Tracy Morgan. Uh, we had Thomas Morgan, who was the director of the film Waiting for Mamu, uh, that was up at Sundance. It was a really fascinating interview if you didn't get a chance to see that. We had Money Penny from Wise Move Records, a local band, but I mean, they're on a good label. They'll be touring the country in another few weeks here at South by Southwest. Um, and then coming up, I know we've got Pete Holmes coming on the show. I'm excited um, for this that week. one. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of great ones. I just recorded with Jay Whitaker, who Jay's actually going to be in the show too. Oh, yeah. Jay's oh, going to he? be in the job interview. Jay Whitaker, one. nice. Yeah, so nice. Jay, like we, a pretty big role, or, or are you going to try to be, see, where, see supporting, where it goes? He'll I guess. be a supporting he'll role. He'll be like the fourth friend. Yeah, he'll be the fourth friend that's kind of like my character's friend. Oh, he'll do a great job. So yeah, oh, yeah. so we're really excited to have Jay, Jay as part of it. And, and we're going to try to involve a lot of the other local comics as well. I mean, there's such a great comedy scene in Utah. We want to be able to have them part of it. And the more and more that we talk to as well. Like, well plus, they'll share. Then they'll share the episodes yeah, with, plus their, they'll share the with, episode their with their friends. Their friends. And, yeah. yeah. Now, do you either you guys do Austin or Johnny? Do you guys do podcasts or any other thing? Or is it just no. strictly acting? Do you have any other fun or, or what? Do you, you just you don't have time for fun? Yeah, no fun. I hate no, <laughs> acting's not fun. Yep. Yeah. No fun. Yeah. No fun. What what else do you guys do? I mean, anything? I like. Well, I you, you were talking about sports. You, yeah, yeah. You, I, do, do sports. Do... I, I like to do. You know, when it I guess while it's winter, I like to go ski. I like rock climbing. Yeah, you know, outdoorsy stuff. Long hiking. walks on the beach. Long walks on the beach. Red wine know, with dinner. Mm, crossword puzzles. You know, um, play the guitar. <laughs> nice. Pretty poorly, but yeah. And I don't know, just yeah, work whatever. Whatever acting jobs I can muster up. So you stay pretty busy. What about you, Johnny? What do you do? You, do you do any have any other creative outlets, or you just kind of act um, and and hang out with your mom and yeah, a lot of hanging out with my mom. Yeah. Um, she's cool. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> so I just had you know because you, you you it was anyways anyways. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, his mom is pretty cool though. She's been actually yeah. made a few comments on Facebook. Right? Yeah, and, yeah. And I, I love seeing how supportive his mom actually is with all yeah. this. Yeah, she really is. And like that was so great because like when I was trying to find myself. I had a good long talk with her and she was like, I, you know, this is your passion. This is what you want to do. I, I don't understand. Like I was confused why you didn't do it at Utah state, you know? And so she's always been way supportive of me. Honestly, you know, I'm just like typical 21 year old kid, you know, like I love playing video games, hanging out with friends. <laughs> I got you, you know, yeah. eating um, steak burgers at D's. Yeah. Late night, uh, D's runs to have a steak burger every now and again. Uh, I used to ski and snowboard quite a bit. I haven't in a while. I don't know. That's pretty much it. I'm, I got you. I got you. I'm not incredible. They're, they're going to get yeah. their time too on the, on, on the mic. So we're going to do Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. We're I always like to get to know people, you know, what makes oh, them tick and right, what, yeah. what, what well, inspires them. Tick. And what. Honestly, like my biggest thing that I do is like movies. Like yeah. I just love oh, to yeah. watch movies. Uh-huh. And then Austin and I quote movies together all the time. Nice. Lately, we've been quoting, uh, Bronson, the Dar- Bronson and the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. Rises. Yeah, John, Johnny can go on four hours doing Bane in person. <laughs> <laughs> Word of the week has been blind. The part, blind. The part yeah, where they're in the sewer. When he goes through the sewers, it's like you're blind. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. And so that's that's like honestly like my main thing is just like quoting, watching movies, movies watching and, movies, and, quoting, and them. quoting them. I actually I just went to F H E on Friday and spent like seventy five bucks on DVDs. Did you say F H E? F Y E. F H E. I've been living in Utah. Family home evening time. Family home evening time. I didn't even know what that was. I've been living in Utah way too long. <laughs> way well, anything else you guys want to add before we close out here? Uh, like the Facebook page. Yeah, go like the Facebook go. page. Uh, if you want to see some of Austin's other fantastic acting, go watch. Uh, <laughs> go watch the, the interrogation. So I know the last time we talked, yeah. we were just getting yeah. ready to film that, and we've had a lot of really great, great reviews on it, and people have really enjoyed it. The script right now is nominated for a filmed in Utah award, and that's on YouTube. That's on YouTube, and I'll put a, I'll put a link up for that yeah, as that's well. On, that's you know? on YouTube on the Top Flight Pictures YouTube page. Yeah, check that out because we'll we'll always be any of like the other film projects and stuff that we're doing will always go up on uh, Top Flight uh, YouTube. I'm actually getting ready to start because Austin's got a lot going in March with some other film projects and stuff. Yeah, and so and uh, Galvin and I will be mm-hmm. and Johnny as well. Has got a play. Yeah, we're yeah, bo- John- we're both involved in separate plays. Right? What's the play that you're in? Uh, the play I'm doing is Four Thousand Miles at Salt Lake Acting yeah. Company. That'll show in April. 
Nice. Nice. And then I am Charlie Brown in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown at Slick. Oh. And that's also in April. That's cute. Yeah, so yeah. it's like we, we're all so busy with some of those other things that so while they're doing those, like I'm going to be filming mm-hmm. another short film starting in March. So it's like we have to take a pause from the job interview for a little bit. Yeah. So we'll then, do the Kickstarter, you know. Yeah, get the Kickstarter all and all that going. And while that's going, I'll be shooting another film. So yeah, yeah we stay. We keep busy. Yeah. We well, I'm busy. I'm excited <laughs> to uh, I'm excited to see the uh, job interview. I'm excited for the the pilot episode. You know, you gave me a teaser of it at the beginning. Yeah, they all, they made no sense yeah. at all. And the other but, actor yeah. you saw in there is Walter Meekum, who is a great Mr. Dole. Just he's just a brilliant actor altogether. Yeah. I mean, he's he's absolutely hilarious and like it's been a <laughs> beyond a pleasure to work with him. So and I mean that the character he plays is is called Mr. Dole, and you'll learn more about him in the pilot, but he's just he's just kind of a weird dude. And like he'll, he, he's he's randomly going to appear throughout the entire yeah, series. He's going to be one of those reoccurring like random off the wall. <laughs> we may as well shout out to Oscar Sanchez, who's also in in the pilot, who plays a uh, a receptionist, as just all we'll say, a very oh, interesting yeah. receptionist. He's mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. No spoilers. Come so, on, Tim. as well as Aubrey Squires, who's in it yes. at, the, at the beginning as well. Yeah, the, I mean, every, everybody's just been fantastic to work with, and I mean, so many great. We're, we're working on getting a few uh, guest starring cameos from some other big names. Yeah. So we don't want to jinx ourselves yet. So, mm. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, uh, we'll check out the job interview when it hits <laughs> hits the uh, internet. You guys like it. Many thanks goes out to Austin, Johnny, and Tim for coming on this episode of the podcast. Check out the uh, links for all the. Uh, things that we talked about in this episode. You can find the show notes at IamSaltLake.com slash 134. That way you can get involved with their fundraiser for the uh, job interview. I'm going to put all the links for their Facebook and Twitter as well, and uh, that way you can connect with them. I'd love to know what you guys think of this episode. You can call the voicemail line 385-202-5926. Let me know what you think of this episode or any of the other episodes of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. Make sure you subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher Radio as I'm here once a week showcasing somebody or something in Salt Lake City. Again, my name is Chris Hollifield, and I'll catch you guys again next week.